So, I'm a bit late to making this. Originally, this was gonna be a review on the first half of Season 2, and it was supposed to be made before the second half even came out. And now Season 3 is on the way. Regardless, I still want to talk about this show. Because Season 2 of The Owl House is easily up there with my favorite seasons of any show. Originally, we were going to cover a different aspect of the show in each video, such as world building, comedy, animation, etc. What we're now going to do is analyze each individual episode and everything to get right. So, strap in, because we got 21 episodes to dive into and a whole lot to talk about. Now without further ado, let's dive into The Owl House Season 2. Picking up a week and a half after Young Blood Old Souls, Separate Tide shows us what our favorite group of criminals is up to this week. Today, they're trying to kill a child before deciding to just kidnap one to fun eat his growing addiction to an alcoholic juice box. And Luce decides to try and solve every issue single-handedly as normal. What's great about this episode, though, is that it gives further motivation to Luce's actions than it just being the right thing to do, or as Bunny Skies puts it, being a people pleaser. And while those elements are certainly here still, there's also the inclusion of Luce's guilt over how last season ended. While we saw her taking up Ida's capture as her responsibility, this episode takes it even further by showing us how much guilt Luce feels towards Ida's brush with death and loss of magic. She isn't ever willing to cut herself any slack, and insists on solving this issue all on her own. Which gives us a nice parallel to the B-plot, where Lil decides to try and start making up for ruining Ida's life by letting her ruin her old boss's life. However, due to the fact that Lilith has no magic anymore, she finds getting the ingredients for this gift to be extremely difficult. Like Luce, she's taking full blame for last season's finale and isn't taking any help from others. But considering how out of their depths both of them are, they both reach a point where they need help. Lilith needs to call in best boy Hootie to help her kill the local bee population, and Luce, well, after having her reward stripped from her, Luce chases down the thief who she finds to be who else but Ida. But before they can really interrogate each other, we get introduced to a new character. That can still be arranged. The Golden Guard's introduction is one of the best for any character in the show for me, right up there with Bellos. It completely shows us how confident and powerful he is as he throws the pair around like rag dolls while laughing like a 12 year old. He knows he's the one in control here, so he decides to let Luce and Ida do his job for him. And while he thinks he just hired two people to kill a beast, he actually just hired a 14-year-old girl with emotional baggage whose mom is just stuck watching. Luz proceeds to bully the first season, then falls from a height that would kill any normal human. But she survives, because I guess Luz is just kind of built different. She quickly learns that maybe she's out of her league with this, and that there might be a better solution available. Ida makes Luz cry, and they make the Golden Guard think the beast has died. Also King is a bird. No! I'm not. Stepping away from the overall summary, I want to just call attention to the really nice use of parallels in this episode. The parallels in the A and B plots, the parallels between this episode and the pilot, and the parallels between smaller things like Ida trying to boast in front of town only to receive nothing but insults even after they protested for her life, like, last week. Lilith and Hootie are a great example of a common thing for the season, which is how it can build meaningful and sincere relationships between characters in a small amount of time. Not like they have much of it after all, while still feeling genuine and well-paced. And it also builds on old relationships really well, Ida and Luce especially. In this episode, Ida is also trying to solve the financial issue while keeping Luce out of harm's way. And we know that she's only trying to protect Luce given the fact that she contradicts what she says in the beginning of the episode. We gotta keep a low profile while my powers are weakened. <laughs> is trying to insist that right now isn't the time to get ambitious with jobs that she's in her weakened state, and yet she knowingly raids one of the Emperor's ships. We also get to see the growing maturity of Ida. Ida still has this moment of boasting, but besides that, everything she does in this episode is for Luce and King. She states that she's given up getting food she likes because they have to cater to what Luce can eat as a human. As previously stated, she pirates the ship to supply the gang with money despite putting herself in a lot of danger and she fully opens up to Luce in order to keep her from going further in her solo quest. Just taking a moment to thank her for improving her life in a similar way to how she did in Agony of a Witch. As was shown later in the season, Ida is a person to literally lock away her issues and bottle everything up, so it makes sense that she's the one to really start Luce's path to opening up, as she starts that journey for herself as well. And as for Luce, she's still keeping up with her old traits. It was a common thing in Season 1 to have Luce try and solve people's problems at her own expense. To list a couple, there's Enchanting Gromfright, Winging Like Witches, Agony of a Witch, and Young Blood Old Souls. 
And look at that, those are all consecutive episodes. These all help to reveal a common theme in Lucy's character, where she's extremely ready to put herself in or through danger just to make other people's lives a bit better. In this episode, she just about died so Ida can afford a drink she likes. And also, King was being held hostage, but you know, that's not as important. The lesson she learns here is absolutely vital for her character. If she were to just keep on doing everything on her own while pushing everyone away, she would probably die. While she has certainly grown a lot, especially with her use of magic, she still needs help. And she has to learn that it's okay. That she isn't a burden, that she needs other people as much as they need her. And while she learns to accept help, she isn't at the point where she actively seeks it when problem solving. The show does something very impressive to me, where she'll make these small steps in accepting more help, while still having these large moments where she tries to solo everything. And it still doesn't feel inconsistent or annoying. It would make sense that someone like Luce would naturally try and solve everything herself if she feels that she caused the issue, or that she's the only one who can solve it. The moment Luce feels like a burden, she'll close herself off so that she can't burden anyone else with her issues. She's coming from a home life where she has no friends, and she finally finds a place that accepts her, and the last thing she wants is to somehow push them away because of her own mistakes. I think for now that's all I have to say about this episode. It's a very fun watch that shows us new characters while developing our old ones in cool ways. And this sediment continues on to our next episodes, which I hope to cover soon. In the meantime, while you're waiting for my next analysis video to be done, I highly suggest you watch these videos. Bunny Sky's analysis of Luz's psychological tendencies and traits, specifically people-pleasing. Midgard Madness's video looking into the writing of Bellus's manipulation is really well done. As are the videos that inspired that one, those being Rebecca Rose's breakdowns into the writing of Amity and Willow. There's also great video essays by Film Freak looking into both the Owl House and Amphibia. And finally, these videos by Cartoon She, which cover their thoughts on Season 1 and 2, and how Season 2 really changed their minds about the show. It also really makes some good points about some of the flaws in Season 1 that changed how I look at it. All these videos will have links in the description, as will my Discord server, which you should join. We recently held a full binge of the Owl House, and we intend to redo it starting on June 23rd as a makeup for those who couldn't join prior. If you're still watching at this point, thank you, and I hope to see you next time as we dive into Escaping Expulsion.